Hello everyone. What I want to talk about today is uh, this is a video or this is a lecture that can be applied uh, to both the subjects of Bible and, mo and modern science, um, the, the Christianity and ethics, or even this could even be uh, uh, possible for the course that I teach in person on Bible and Western culture. Because it's an important subject, to, to it's near and dear to me, uh, dealing with the concepts that we discuss in a class like this or in others where these ideas are constantly being portrayed in around us, in, in our culture all the time, particularly in modern media. Now, in the books you read and the music we listen to and even the movies we watch, so these concepts, whether it's ethical issues, whether it's creation stories, whether it's things that are a morality tale, it's constantly being generated through stories and particularly in film. And that's why I think it's such an important conversation to have because we tend to think, well, stories are just stories and then I hear my truth somehow in a religious context. Nothing could be further from the truth. In fact, I contend that oftentimes we actually imbibe the things we believe far more from the media that we consume around us than in a formal context when our guard may be up and we're really evaluating, is this person really saying what's true? So what we do is we will go to a religious context or we'll listen to some sort of conference speaker or we'll maybe even listen to a professor. And our guard is up a little bit and we're evaluating, or is, is it? Is it really so? Is, are they really delivering a good ethical dilemma to me, or are they tr really giving me some sort of uh, conceptual idea that would that was generated in some early creation text from the ancient world? Uh, we're really evaluating that when we hear that person, but then we go off to the movies, and our guard's not up, and everything flies in under the radar, and oftentimes we imbibe or take in concepts without even realizing it. And really what I want to do in this, con in this talk is challenge you to think consciously about it, to watch your films in a little bit different way, to, because film and, uh, uh, and movies are an art form, like any art form, they are open to interpretation, they are open to evaluation, but oftentimes in really good art, there's not necessarily an agenda by the artist trying to communicate something specific, but it does inspire some thought of some kind. A good artist will really get you thinking, and you'll have to contemplate it for a while, and it'll sit with you, and you'll have to chew on it, and it'll stick with you, and you, you, you can't seem to let it go. Now, oftentimes, that stands in stark contrast to what I refer to as Christian media, uh, quote-unquote Christian media. For those in the religious context, you know, a person can be taking this class, they don't have to be Christian, but if you're... Uh, in this class, and you are maybe in a, if you are part of a Christian tradition, you may have been exposed before to Christian music, Christian fiction, uh, and particularly that thing called Christian movies, which in my view oftentimes falls way short, very far short, of what would be just, ab you know, just objective standards of good art. And, you know, I know many will disagree with me, but I oftentimes see that you're the production quality of a supposed Christian movie and regular movies, uh, just a stark contrast between the production quality of one and the production quality of the other. In fact, oftentimes I often, I'm often only half joking when I say the Dove Awards are for those who recognize one another who lack the talent to make it in the, sec in the real world. So I, I'm, I'm someone who, it's very, very challenging for me because oftentimes this idea of Christian music or Christian movies, these are ways in which people are trying to foist upon or really trying to be overt and teach or project a lesson to someone. And as a result, completely miss the conventions of good art. Well, by contrast, sometimes things that are actually well done, that are good art, they communicate things that we wrestle with from an ethical or religious or a sacred context, sacred ideas. Those things communicate those things better than those supposedly religious artists who were trying to project something. Uh, oftentimes, you'll see the the you go see the everyone at a in a religious context says you need to see this film or they'll recommend a film because they're saying well it has a good message to it 
and you go watch it and it's crap. You think, why did I waste two hours watching that? I just feel dumber as a result. But then at the same time, you go see a good film, maybe even a, a really excellent film, and the content of it really challenges you, makes you really wrestle with something, and you think, oh man, I, I'll never be the same as a result. As re, you know, from viewing that, you were forced to wrestle maybe sometimes with a concept that is found in a sacred text, is found in, is communicated through a religious context, but no one took the time to talk to you about it. I think that's very unfortunate. Good art should get people talking, even if the artist isn't necessarily a religious person trying to intend that. Case in point, uh, from a Christian context, oftentimes as a Christian, I'm someone who's very much because I become very upset with what's referred to as Christian film a lot, like I said, because oftentimes it's just cruddy. It's horrible. Uh, the production quality is sub subpar, substandard. It's clearly on a shoestring budget, and the acting is lousy. The, the editing is even worse, and everyone now wants you to um, imbibe some message from the religious cinema. And in my view, that's even... That sets the religious tradition, that sets the religious dignity back a few years. Because now you just seem all that much more hokey. By contrast, as a Christian, I'm oftentimes watching films and I see sometimes, oftentimes Christian themes, or but yeah, well, not even Christian, but at least religious themes, moral themes. Themes that date back, go all the way back into the sacred texts that the Western traditions of Judaism and Christianity really hold dear. They'll, these, these themes will be communicated through those films and they'll even be more powerfully conveyed because there was no agenda by the, by the point of the director, by the point of the artist, to try to communicate that. They just went, simply wanted to tell a good story. They simply wanted good actors to tell a good story. It was edited well. The film grabbed you and brought you into that, into the, those characters' experience. And as a result, you probably wrestled even more with concepts found within a, that are often taught within a religious context, but that film did it even more effectively than would otherwise occur. I'll give you a perfect example. And many people look at me askance when I say this. One of the most I guess, Christian films, quote-unquote Christian films that I've seen in recent years. James Cameron's the film Avatar. People say, what are you talking about? They, James Cameron isn't a Christian, and he's trying, not trying to convey that idea. I know, he's just trying to tell a good story. However, if when you, within the Christian tradition, the mythology or the belief is that... Um, that something's wrong with humanity, there's trouble in the garden, and there's a result of, uh, uh, as a result of some cha of chaotic agency being introduced into the world that's ruining the world, uh, the Christian tradition refers to that as sin. Because of sin being entered into the world, uh, everything is going to pot. Everything is happening, everything is falling apart as, and not going the way it should. Well, Apparently, humanity is not able to rescue itself. So, in comes from outside, according to the Christian tradition, in comes from outside God who becomes incarnate, becomes man, who basically takes on human flesh in order to be the hero that humanity needs. So, humanity is not able to conjure this uh, hero on their own. God has to become a man in order to be the hero that humanity needs, die on their behalf, and as a result, the redemption of the world is, is achieved. And that's part of the whole story of Jesus Christ and sacrifice and so forth. That's all part of the Christian tradition. Hero comes from outside of humanity, from off-world, if you will, becomes human, becomes part of the human, you know, takes on the, fully the human condition in order to redeem or rescue the human experience. That's the Christian message. Well, in Avatar, you have a hero that comes from off-world, takes on the very flesh of the local natives, and solves their problem of the world being of the world um, the, being uh, ruined because of an exterior chaotic de um, de degrading agents agency. So that people say, well, aren't you reading into that a lot? That's the magic of mythology. 
mythology is oftentimes a story that is a, just a good story. It doesn't necessarily have to be factual. But mythology can work in a way that it's clearly analogous to something else. Mythology oftentimes will take a story and their characters, and you don't try to overdo the comparisons. But generally speaking, in a, in a kind of a broad sense, it reminds you of other concepts that you've learned that are true, but it communicates them in a very, very powerful way. That's the power of mythology. In a preliterate world, in the ancient world, mythologies are used in order to convey these ideas, whether it's creation stories or morality tales, whether it's a story that dem demonstrates the, the goodness of good and the badness of evil, um, or the benefits of righteousness and the, uh, and the consequences of folly. Either way, these stories in a preliterate society, in a preliterate world, oftentimes even in an oral society, stories are used to convey these concepts even more, more powerfully than just if someone were to tell you what to think. So in our, in our society now, movies are extremely important. And we watch them all the time. Now, it's not just movies. It's oftentimes in television and even in books that we read, the books we read, the television shows we watch, and the movies we see. Stories grab us. They always have. In the ancient world, stories was the thing. Now, now modernity came in as a result, after the Enlightenment, modernity, you know, modernism, kind of made people more addicted to those type of propositional truths where someone's going to wag their finger at you and tell you what to think. Well, modernism has kind of had its way, has it had its say, but now in a postmodern context, we don't like that so much. We don't like people wagging their finger in our face telling us, here's what you must believe. We like to discover it through ourselves or at least give it to us in a way that's rather compelling through the form of a good story. Where somewhat, in a sense, people say, well, I'm kind of postmodern. True, but there's a sense in which postmodernism, those of us who consider ourselves more postmodern, are really just kind of uh, being nostalgic for ancient times when people respected us enough to get, give us these truths through good stories. And we could grasp it for ourselves by listening to the story and mining it and grabbing it out of it and grabbing out of that what we needed to. Films do that for us now. In a postmodern context, a film director is like a storyteller of the ancient world. Now, I say all that to say this. We talked about an extra credit opportunity. Well, here it is. Specific, I'm going to follow this up with, an, with a little bit of description, um, so it's specific to each uh, class, um, whether it's Bible and modern science, Christianity and ethics. But what we want to do is we want to talk more about specific films that deal with the subject that we're wrestling with. And I want to give you an opportunity because of the, you know, as an extra credit assignment, I want to give you an opportunity to watch a film and specifically grapple with and describe the ways in which that film, that story mythologizes the subject that we're dealing with. We'll list some specific films uh, in the follow-up message. But I want you to think about watching films in a way that are more than just what the director intends. Sometimes a good story, like any good art, is somewhat subjective. And like, rightly so, we are subjectively approaching it thinking that story, that art, conveys something that is specific to the subject I'm thinking about, or specific to the subject I'm studying. Give you another example. And many people will go, boy, I don't know, you're really out there. I already, men I already mentioned Avatar. Uh, again, as a Christian, I tend to watch movies Christianly, if that's a word. Yeah, I like tend to watch film as a Christian. And I also sometimes like scary movies. How does that work? Well, we're getting close to Halloween, so we can talk about scary movies. Well, one of the, my favorites that I watched was a movie with Lawrence Fishburne and Sam Neill called Event Horizon, in which a, um, in which a uh, spaceship um, uh, had some... It, it's too intricate to go into here, but basically it's a haunted spaceship that had achieved a trans-dimensional drive that had gone through some other dimension and then returned. When it came back, it was supposedly haunted. By the end of the story, though, 
many of the people, many of the crew had, of course, it's a, it's a horror movie, so many of the crew had died badly, and there are many of you who don't like gore that would have to look away. Nevertheless, by the end of the film, Lawrence Fishburne has to make a decision. Um, and the decision he makes, I don't want to know if I want to give it away from it. Oh, if those of you who don't like spoilers, stop the, stop it, you know, pause now or put it on mute. But Lawrence Fishburne has to make a decision. Um, and the decision he makes is to sacrifice himself to save everybody else. There's a sense in which that very much parallels the Christian mythology. The idea of the, the Messiah, the Christ, Jesus of Nazareth, dying on behalf so that other, so that many others, everyone else may live. So you'd say, well, that's not distinct to the Christian message. That's a story that that's a idea that's taught throughout many religions. Absolutely, yet you're you're right. That's part of what just makes it a good story. That's part of what makes it even more true than can be contained just within a single tradition. But you recognize, though, won't you, that when you see something like that in the film? Part of what makes it such a good story is that it's communicating something so true that it's almost universal. Everybody would acknowledge that greater love has no man than this, that he laid down his life for his friends. As a result, a scary horror movie that many people would cringe from, cringe and maybe hide your, you know, hide your eyes from it. Still, you'll look at it and go, oh my gosh, that was actually rather profound. I remember reading about that in a reading about a concept like that in a sacred text before. That's an example of what I talk about when we read or we watch or review this art in a subjective way. But those who have eyes to hear and ears, uh, eyes to see and ears to hear, that's no problem. You're going to see such things in the art. And now we want to talk about how we're going to do that specifically for each course. All right? That's all we want to talk about. I'll send a follow up message to talk about specific ways to apply this to each course.